lastly, start our worship, our formal worship this morning, we can't help but hold the people of Hawaii in our prayers, all who have lost loved ones, lost their homes, their businesses, their way of life, who I can't even imagine are filled with the uncertainty of what is next for them. So in our prayers this morning, let us keep the people of Hawaii um, in our prayers close. Now, if you will join me in standing as you are able for our opening hymn. My sisters and brothers, blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. Jacob's sons struggle with sibling strife, 
selling their favored brother into slavery. Listen now for the word of God. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age. He had made him a long robe with sleeves. Now when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carrying it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Israelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Let us read portions of Psalm 105 together. Give thanks to the Lord and And call call upon upon his his name. name. Make Make known known his his deeds among among the peoples. Sing to him, sing sing praises praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. name. Let Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done 
his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from the Epistle to the Romans. The Apostle Paul has great affection for his blood brothers, the Israelites. No one is treated with partiality before God. All have sinned. All have offered redemption. Listen now for the word of God. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. What, but what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your, with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we hear your word today, we see our Lord at prayer. Help us each to hear your gentle voice tugging at our hearts for a deeper life of prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Last Sunday, Maurice Hill, chair of the search committee, gave an important update on the progress of the search committee that they had finished the first round of interviews with all of their candidates and were now ready to move on to the next steps of their search process in preparation of bringing their work to the vestry. We are at a critical time in your transition here at St. Columbus. The search committee is prayerfully and actively interviewing candidates while candidates are prayerfully discerning a call to serve St. Columbus. While this work is going, all around, going on all around us, our task as individuals in a congregation is to pray for the search committee, the candidates, and the vestry. And while we continue to do that, we are called to be faithful to our call to serve God here in this parish and in the community called and entrusted into our care. So it is prayer that I see through the lens of when I read our scriptures for today, especially Matthew's story about Jesus' walking on the water two parts of this story I would like us to focus on. First, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. And the second part of this story is the disciples in the boat along with Jesus. In the New Testament scripture, the boat is almost always a metaphor for the church. So how does Jesus at prayer and the boat filled with disciples speak to us this morning? It has always remained a mystery to me that we don't have more stories in scripture about Jesus either speaking about his own personal spiritual experience or instructing the disciples how to pray. 
So often in scripture, while Jesus is praying, the disciples are either asleep or distracted. Now, I can personally relate to that. But the references to Jesus at prayer are often brief, and oddly enough, there aren't many of them. So in our story today, Jesus and the disciples had just finished a full day of teaching and healing and ended the day with the feeding of the 5,000. And today we hear the next part where Jesus sends the disciples by boat to the other side of the lake while he stays to attend to the last few stragglers from the crowd. Then, when that is done, Jesus goes up the mountain by himself to pray. The story suggests that he is there for several hours in prayer until the middle of the night. We are left to wonder what is happening while Jesus prays. What is it like for him when he prays for so many hours? Is he spiritually and emotionally recharging after the demands of an exhausting day? Is this part of his daily spiritual practice? We know from the beginning of this chapter that Jesus had just learned of the execution of his dear cousin, John the Baptist, his mentor and friend. So perhaps Jesus was on the mountain grieving the loss of his cousin. Whatever the reason for his prayer, Jesus is praying. And as followers of Jesus, how do we follow Jesus in our own prayer life? So right off the bat, let me begin by saying that some of us, perhaps most of us, struggle all of our lives with a daily prayer life. I know that over my life as a Christian, I have struggled at times with a daily prayer life. Sometimes these struggles leave us so defeated that we don't even dare to try again. This morning, if that is your situation, I don't dare you. I invite you, I encourage you, I woo you to reconsider recommitting to a daily life of prayer. So I want to frame my words about our call to a daily prayer as encouragement and not fear or guilt. Thomas Merton, the famous Trappist monk, said about his own off and on faithfulness, In spite of all of our failures and uncertainties about our own spiritual life, that the desire to please God does in fact please God. Having the simple intention to please God makes God happy. With that intention, no matter what the outcome, God is already delighted. So please, set aside perfection, set aside failure, set aside guilt, set aside fear. A life of prayer is not about perfection. We all fall short of the mark, and yet God is always there when we show up again not with a wagging finger, but gentle and open arms of love and mercy. A daily prayer life begins with that simple intention, to show up with the heart open to God, not a promise of perfection. Having this simple intention pleases God, no matter however imperfect what follows. I have struggled throughout my life with daily prayer. 
I have tried many different types and forms of prayer and study. It has only been in the last a little less than 10 years that I have finally found my prayer voice and practice. I have tried to be faithful to daily prayer because I believe it is the source, it is the source of my life in God. And as a, and as a priest, I believe I am called to an example of a life of prayer, however imperfect my prayer is. Some of you already have a daily prayer life. For the rest of us, today I pray that you hear Jesus' example of daily prayer as you call and that you and you are called to renew your own life to a daily practice of prayer. The collected wisdom of others is that finding a regular time and place is helpful. I am a morning person, so that is the time that works best for me. I am up early before Bill, and I sit on the sofa in our living room with my coffee. Please find the right time and place that works for you. Over the years, I've experimented with the daily office, reading the Bible as lexico, Lexio, the Anglican Rosary, and Centering Prayer, for example. But over these last years, I have blended meditation and intercession as my daily practice. I begin with the intention of opening my heart to God's love during this time. The collected wisdom of others is that the first act of prayer is putting your heart in the posture to be in the presence of God to both share and receive. So that's the first thing you do, is simply make the intention to open your heart to God. So often, my attention strays. Most days are routine with an occasional glimmer of insight. And yet, it's oddly like tithing. However imperfect, there is a measure of satisfaction that I am on the right track regardless of how imperfect are the results. Spiritually, how I see the world shapes how I enter into prayer. I see this world and the next all connected by God's love. Those in the next world are not separated us, ultimately. We are all connected by cords of divine love. So as I pray meditatively, I move through prayers for my family, for friends and for concerns, for those living and for those dead. Not praying strongly for outcomes in my prayer, but merely that God's love will be with them and God's love will sustain them. While I don't use a rosary or prayer beads as a tactile way to move from person to person, it's like an imaginary rosary of beads as I move through my prayer chain. If you are not certain about how to start or where to start, look around. This parish is filled with persons who are regular prayer warriors. Ask me if you don't already know, and I can point you in the right direction. I am also always available and would love to talk with you about how to find a prayer practice that works for you. So while I am with you, I welcome conversations about your prayer life. Finally, let us return to the boat, the disciples, and Jesus. I see this story as a parable, not an historical event, because I don't believe that Jesus is literally calling Peter to walk on water as a proof 
of his faith. Yes, I think Jesus is challenging us to go deeper in our life of faith. So in this story, as I imagine where we are today here at St. Columbus, we are crossing the sea of transition with Jesus and our fellow disciples. And in the boat today, we pray for the search committee and the clergy discerning a call to walk with St. Columbus and the vestry. We pray for the deep listening of the Spirit for all sides in the process, and that the God of wisdom and peace and serenity will guide them, all those in this process, to a clear consensus. And then we try to let go of the outcome, trusting that God is working through the process. God's wisdom is unfolding. God's love and God's light is being revealed to all who are searching. So while we are crossing the sea of transition, we are getting closer to the other side. We can see a hazy shore far in the distance. So for the next few months, for all of us in the boat, can we commit to daily prayer for the search committee, for the clergy, for the clergy candidates, and for the vestry? For the next few months until you have a new rector, can we not commit daily to pray for them who are working so hard and so faithfully to discern both a call and those charged with decision-making. It seems the very least that we can do. Starting next Sunday, like our welcoming prayer, we will say together each Sunday morning the prayer chosen by the vestry last year to be the prayer that guides the search process for the search committee, for the candidates, and for the vestry. And by extension, us as well. In the meantime, between Sundays, I invite you to consider daily prayer for the search committee, the candidates, and the vestry, praying that God will guide them, that God's love and wisdom will be showered down upon them. And each Sunday, we will say this prayer together. And this prayer I close with this morning. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, you have brought St. Columbus to this important time in our history. Look graciously on us and guide us through our search, that it may enable us to grow in commitment to one another and the work of Christ in our community. Help us to hear your gentle voice and to be obedient to your will. Bless us in this search that we may choose a faithful pastor to join us in our ministries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. As you are able, please join me in standing as we affirm our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrow, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven, 
to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Prayers of the people. We glory in God's name through the offering of our prayers and petitions, responding, hear us, good Lord. For the will to discover God's word dwelling in our hearts, finding expression through our lips, and revealing the hope through our generosity, let us pray, hear us, good Lord. For a renewed commitment to righteousness and peace, that we may join with the leaders of the nation <clears throat> excuse me, in seeking ways to promote harmony in warring lands and mutual respect as across cultures, races, and languages. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For creative ways to express the faith, drawing upon the jewels of our tradition, and using our hearts and minds to proclaim Christ's message to those of little faith who have no faith at all. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. That the summer months may provide opportunities for rest and refreshment so that we may re be rejuvenated for the challenges ahead. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For our medical personnel who volunteer their services in foreign lands and amongst the most needy of the world, that we may lift our voices in praise for the good news they bring to others. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For those who have died and reside in the death, tomb of death, that Christ, who broke the chains of death, will bring them to eternal life. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Ever increasing in faith, we continue praying for our own needs and those of others. <clears throat> we pray for the church, for our bishops, Justin, Michael, and John, for St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, <clears throat> and our Project Hope Food Ministries and our clergy, staff, vestry, rector search committee, and clergy discerning a call to St. Columbus. We pray for those with immediate needs, Gail, Richard, Grace, Melvin, Michaela, Callahan, Robin, Roberta, Julie, Blake, Yvonne, Alice, Brianna, Hank, Meg, Allison, John, Jill, Norma, Christy, Luis, Jameson, Dick, Bruce, Morgan, Karina, Chris, Emily, Michael, Patricia, Dory, Candace, Melissa, Maggie, Dick, and Skyler, and those who have continuing needs. We pray for the world, for peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia, and for those who lost so much in Lahaina, Hawaii. For all those serving at home and abroad, Jesse, Liam, Simon, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, and Chris. <clears throat> the flowers on the high altar are given today to the glory of God by Norma McQuaid in loving memory of her dear husband, Lauren, and her father, Norman, and in thanksgiving for her son, Sandy, who is now the man of the family. You may offer your own prayers either silently or aloud. 
let us remember the people of Hawaii. Lord, in the storms of life, bid us come to you, that we who are aware of our weakness may be made strong through the power of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to pray the welcoming prayer with me. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Columbus. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the warmth of your love. Help us to perceive their needs and give us wisdom to respond, knowing each person crossing our threshold is sent by you to enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place where all your children are embraced and accepted in the name of the child you sent to be our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And now I invite you to be seated while I, anyone who has a birthday or an anniversary to come forward. So a birthday? Yes. For yourself or another? And another, my mother will be 100 tomorrow. Yesterday was the family celebration. Yes. Was it a lovely day? Oh, it was marvelous. Good, 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 good. Well, I'm sure you'll want to talk to Jeanette at the coffee hour and learn more. That's just a lovely thing. And we hold Lois, especially in our prayers today, as we pray. Watch over, over thy, thy children, children o, Lord, o Lord, as their, their days increase. increase. Bless and, and guide, guide them where they may be. Strengthen, strengthen them, them when, when they stand. stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratu give her our love. I'll give her a hug. Too. Good, good, good. All of that and more. And now I invite you to stand as we share the peace with one another. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 